Okay, there are going to be three types of membranes, and membranes are when we take the epithelial tissue plus the underlying connective tissue and add them together. The three types of membranes that we have in the body are cutaneous membranes, mucous membranes, and serous membranes. Our cutaneous membranes are dry membranes, and the only cutaneous membrane that we have would be our skin. Our mucous membranes are all of the membranes that open up to the outside of our body. Uh, so examples of mucous membranes would be our respiratory passages. So our lungs, the trachea, our in, inside of our noses, those all open up to the outside of the body. So those are our mucous membranes. Our digestive tract, the entire digestive tract is considered a mucous membrane. No matter where you are inside the digestive tract, it is lined with a mucous membrane. The urogenital tract is a mucous membrane, so those are our mucous membranes. And then we have our serous membranes. We went over serous membranes in Chapter 1. Serous membranes are double membranes that reduce friction, so our serous membranes would line the body cavity and then cover the, the ex, uh, an organ. And so it would be between the organ and the body cavity and would produce friction between that, that organ and the body cavity that it lies within. Okay, um, one term for the mucous membrane that you've maybe not heard before is the term lamina propria, and that term lamina propria refers to the areolar connective tissue that is the, the uh, connective tissue in that mucous membrane. So actually, let's do the connective tissue and the epithelial connective the epithelial tissue for each one of these. So for the cutaneous membrane, uh, for our skin, the underlying connective tissue is always going to be dense, irregular connective tissue, dense irregular connective tissue. There might be just a small amount of irregular connective tissue before we get to that dense irregular connective tissue, but it's always going to be the bulk of that connective tissue that supports the uh, epithelial tissue that's on top of it. And what would be the epithelial tissue that makes up your skin? I hope you said keratinized stratified squamous epithelium because that is your uh, the outer layer of your skin that would make up the epidermis. The epidermis of your skin is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and the underlying connective tissue which makes up the dermis is dense irregular connective tissue. Alright, for the serous membranes, this is they're the next easier one to do. For serous membranes, the epithelial tissue is always going to be simple squamous epithelium. They're inside the body. There's not a lot of abrasion going on. It's going to be simple squamous epithelium. For the underlying connective tissue, the underlying connective tissue will always be a realer connective tissue. So we're going to have simple squamous epithelium with an underlying a realer connective tissue. But when we get to the mucous membranes, we can't always name the epithelial tissue. It's going to depend where you are inside the body. Uh, the underlying connective tissue will always be a realer connective tissue, and we call it the lamina propria when it's underneath that connective tissue. The realer tissue is just called lamina propria, uh, but the epithelial tissue depends on where you are. If you're in an area of high abrasion, such as in the mouth or in the esophagus, in the vagina or in the anal canal, that, that epithelial tissue might be stratified squamous. If you're in the stomach or along the small intestines, uh, anywhere in the large intestines, that epithelial tissue will be simple columnar. So if you maybe if you're in the respiratory tract along the trachea or in the nose somewhere, it's going to be pseudostratified um, ciliated columnar epithelium. So in mucous membranes, you can't really predict the epithelial tissue as easily as you can in these other ones. It's going to be depending on where you are in the body. So a membrane is an epithelial tissue along with the underlying connective tissue. And here are pictures of those membranes. Our cutaneous membrane is the dry membrane. It's the skin, the outer epithelial tissue with the underlying connective tissue. The mucous membranes are those membranes that open to the outside of the body. So here we have our respiratory tract opening. The lungs, the, here's the trachea, our larynx would be about right here, and then out the nose, and then the digestive system, the mouth, and down the esophagus, the stomach, and so forth. And here are serous membranes. Remember that our serous membranes are, are, are named according to the body cavity that they're in and the, the organ that they surround. So here we have our parietal peritoneum. Parietal is 
naming the body cavity that's lining in the visceral is the organ. So visceral is organ, parietal, body cavity, and the peritoneum refers to that we're in the abdominal cavity here. So parietal, lining the body cavity, peritoneum, the organ, I mean, the, excuse me, the visceral, the organ, trying to go too fast here, and the peritoneum refers to this body cavity itself, the abdominal cavity. Over here, parietal, pleura, means we're lining the, the cavity that's housing the lungs. Visceral pleura means we're lining the lung itself or covering the lung itself. And the visceral pericardium, visceral refers to the organ. So we're lining or covering the organ, the heart. And parietal pericardium, we're lining the cavity in which the heart lies. So these are the serous membranes. These membranes reduce friction. So, so much for the membranes. We're on to tissue repair. A lot of damage occurs in your body. And when you damage your tissues, your injured cells are going to release these things called growth factors. Growth factors are hormones released by cells, and they're going to trigger nearby cells to um, undergo mitosis, and that will repair the area and also they're going to trigger other immune cells such as white blood cells to creep into the area and help uh, clean the area up. Now when tissues damage we're going to repair our tissues by two processes. Those processes are regeneration and fibrosis. Regeneration is, regeneration is when you regenerate the area with the same type of tissue. For example here we have if you injure your, the stratified squamous epithelium, it's going to replace itself with stratified squamous epithelium. So regeneration is totally repairing yourself. In fibrosis, you replace the damaged area with a totally different type of tissue. For instance, we would replace heart tissue with scar tissue. So we're replacing cardiac muscle with fibrous connective tissue which is a totally different tissue type. So we have regeneration, we're replacing the tissue with its own tissue type or fibrosis is replacing with scar tissue. Two totally different ways to repair a tissue because if you repair with fibrosis the tissue is not going to respond the same way. Like if you have a heart attack, um, your heart cannot repair itself. Your heart replaces the damaged cardiac tissue with scar tissue, and in that area where that scar tissue uh, replaces the cardiac muscle, that, am that area of the heart is not going to be able to contract the same way that it always contracted. So on the steps to repair, the first thing that's going to happen is inflammation. Those injured cells are going to release substances that cause inflammation, particularly your mast cells. Mast cells release histamine, and those that histamine causes localized blood vessels to become leaky, and substances leak into the area, particularly um, fluid from those blood vessels, and macrophages will start creeping into the area and start to clean up all the debris. If you've damaged your blood vessel, blood will leak into the area and a blood clot will form. And then this process of organization will occur. And what organization is, is a new new blood vessels forming, capillaries growing into that area, and fibroblasts. Fibroblasts that are in the area already because we're in, fibroblasts are in the connective tissue. And so fibroblasts will creep into the area and they'll start laying new collagen fibers down and you just replace all this area with collagen fibers and all the new connective tissue. So this is basically fibrosis that's occurring right here. So new soft tissue is laid down and this new soft tissue is called granulation tissue. And granulation tissue will eventually become scar tissue. Now sometimes we don't see the scar tissue with our naked eye but it is there. I say right here, in pure infections, healing occurs by regeneration only. In pure, affection, in pure infections, you don't, you not cut yourself or anything like that. You just have damage to the area. It's like a blister. Like if you look in your throat and you see um, blisters in your throat, if you have strep infections, regeneration is going to occur because usually that damage is not to the underlying connective tissue, but just to the surface epithelium. Okay, so here we have a picture. We've got our cut 
to our surface epithelium and underlying connective tissue and we see our macrophages creeping along trying to heal up this damaged area these cells have released growth factors and so these healthy cells out here are going to be undergoing mitosis along with some fibroblasts down here regeneration will completely occur up here now regeneration means these cells are going to replace themselves by stratified squamous cells these cells are going to completely regenerate we have a scab forming up here the blood is just going to dry and scrape off and you'll have new skin up here and here we have our fibroblasts creeping in and they're going to bridge this area and form new fibers they secrete the collagen fibers the reticular fibers you know if more reticular fibers will be secreted more elastic fibers are needed but more mostly collagen fibers in here because that's what we're going to form scar tissue with and we see our little um, capillaries that are growing the capillaries will grow and bridge this area and here we have a totally new tissue here we have our regenerated epithelium so epithelial tissue will totally regenerate itself but this underlying connective tissue has has replaced itself but through fibrosis so we have scar tissue down here and it just looks a little different than the surrounding area in the dense irregular connective tissue this is how you heal yourself on the scale of regeneration the best tissues for regeneration will be epithelial tissue and bone bone regenerates itself very well epithelial tissue regenerates its very, itself very well smooth muscle has moderate capability of regeneration dense irregular connective tissue that you have down here moderates its it has a moderate ability of regeneration moderate so do tendons and ligaments when you get to cardiac muscle and nervous tissue it's very very poor regeneration ability very very poor 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 um, as a matter of fact there's not going to be any regeneration whatsoever whatsoever with nervous tissue and with cardiac muscle it will be fibrosis only when it comes to skeletal muscle skeletal muscle is very poor at regeneration very poor so fibrosis will occur there is some capability of regeneration but it's mostly fibrosis so skeletal muscle not so good at regeneration um, your worst ones are going to be uh, nervous tissue and cardiac muscle so don't plan on healing yourself if you get a big brain injury or have a heart attack and that's about it